Well, our next guest has written extensively on the real reach of Nazism. Uki Goni has spent many years interviewing Nazi fugitives while covering Argentina's military junta back in the 1970s and 80s. It's good to have you on the program. I I'm wondering what went through your mind when you first heard Russia justifying the invasion of Ukraine as an attempt to denazify the country. Well, thank you for having me. Yes, well, uh, unlike the, the the imaginary na Ukrainian Nazis of, of Putin's febrile imagination, I have interviewed real Nazis. I interviewed the private secretary of Yosef Goebbels, Wilfred von Hoffen. I spent many an evening with him here in Buenos Aires. And, Goeb and Wilfred walked Goebbels to the car when, when, when Goebbels was going to join the Fuhrer in the bunker to commit suicide. And these men had more in common with Putin than they had with the young leader or the young you know, generation in Ukraine. Apart from the dead eyes, it's the invention of the imaginary enemy. You know, Putin has invented an, an imaginary Nazi Ukraine that is a threat to Germany. And just like when we're children, we need an imaginary friend to play with. I think these aging despots need an imaginary enemy to fight against. Yeah, but that's a good explanation. But what about the, the, the obvious, the elephant in the room here? Vladimir Zelensky is a democratically elected president who also happens to be Jewish. How can Putin fight against that reality with the argument of having to denazify the country? Well, I, I think, you know, Putin seems to be lost inside the, la the labyrinth of his own mind. I mean, he's, he's, Putin must be afraid. He's, he's pushing 70 and uh, be afraid of becoming increasingly irrelevant to the young generation of Russians born in this century. There are people born in, 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 in Russia who are 20, 21, 22 years old today who only know Putin. They've never lived under anything else than Putin. And, um, and to them, Putin must seem like a relic of, an, of another era, a long ago time of the, so you know, and Putin lives in the world of the Soviet Union, and he talks about the Nazis, and the, and the, the Nazis were defeated 80 years ago. And he talks about the Russian Empire, which is even, even further back. So, you know, when, when Putin is talking about Nazis, I think he's talking about anybody who's not me. You know, because that is the, the, the enemy that he knows. Mm -hmm. But it's not an enemy to the young people in, in Russia or in Ukraine who are connected to social media, who are living in an increasingly westernized world, and who are young and vibrant and not afraid of close, close proximity to others. So I think um, Putin is, is having that battle inside his own mind, which unfortunately could lead the world to the brink of nuclear annihilation. And what do you think... Vladimir Putin is doing to the alphabet. I'm talking about the letter Z or Z if you're in North America. I mean, it has become a symbol of Russia's war on Ukraine, painted on Russian military vehicles. And you've got ordinary people in Russia and in other places around the world showing their support for the Kremlin's invasion by showing this letter. What do you make of that? Well, I think every despot needs to invent, you know, Hitler invented the swastika, the Mussolini invented the fascists, which was the wooden rods tied together. And Putin has invented the Z. And it's interesting because if you grab the Z and then you grab another Z and you flip it on the horizontal and put the two of them together and then twist them slightly, you do get a swastika. Um, it's a rallying cry and it's also a, 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 um, a divisive sign because you know, a symbol, a brand, a logo like that immediately divides the world between us, the Zs, and and them, the non-Zs. And it is also unfortunately the last word the last letter of the of the of the Western alphabet. And I hope that doesn't mean that this is going to be the last war of humanity, you know, according to a man who's got six thousand nuclear warheads. You and I both and I think a, a lot of people around the world are hoping the same thing. Ukigoni, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.